One of the most influential public health figures of the period is Joseph Goldberger. In 1914, he's summoned by the Surgeon General to investigate an especially baffling disease ravaging the American South. It's called pellagra. The victims develop reddish rough skin that often appears as a butterfly-shaped rash. As the disease progresses, patients become confused, hallucinate, and finally go insane. There have been tens of thousands of deaths in the rural South by the time Joseph Goldberger is assigned the case. At the time, it was a mystery disease, and people had many theories about what caused it. The most uh, prominent theory was that it was caused by eating corn. And there were other people who thought that it must be carried by an insect. This was fairly early on in the bacteriological revolution, and so some people thought that it was carried by a bacteria. Um, but no one knew. Goldberger journeys through the South to observe firsthand the conditions where pellagra is most severe. Everywhere he travels, the picture is strikingly similar. Desperately poor people working in cotton fields and textile mills, suffering from the disease. Goldberger visits insane asylums and other state institutions where alarming numbers of new cases are being reported. He knows the disease causes insanity, which might account for the victims in asylums. But why is it so prevalent in orphanages and prisons? And if it's an infectious disease, why isn't the staff getting sick as well? One would think that if this were a germ disease, the germs certainly wouldn't be aware of status boundaries. Uh, why would only the inmates get pellagra, and why never a nurse, a physician, or a teacher? And he began to look at what people ate, and he was horrified at what he saw because the diet was so miserable, not like anything he had ever seen before. It was the diet of the southern frontier, consisting primarily of cornbread, um, fatback or pork, and syrup. Goldberger is well aware of the recent discoveries of chemical elements in food called vitamins. He also knows that diseases like scurvy and beriberi have been linked to vitamin deficiencies. And he suspects pellagra may be the same kind of disease. Goldberger decides to test his theory at two orphanages full of pellagra victims in Jackson, Mississippi. He starts by improving the children's meager diet with fresh vegetables, meat, and milk, foods rich in vitamins and proteins. And lo and behold, much to his own delight, the children who had pellagra got well when their diets were changed. And those who didn't have pellagra didn't contract pellagra after their diets were changed. Well, that was all well and good, but it certainly wasn't scientific evidence. And Goldberger was very much aware of that. Goldberger decides to show Southerners that he can actually give people pellagra by simply changing their diet. He persuades the governor of Mississippi to pardon any convicts who volunteer for a controlled diet experiment. He chooses the Rankin prison farm because there are no cases of pellagra and plenty of room to isolate the convicts from germs. They were moved to a special building that had screens on the windows so that no insects could come in. It was scrubbed once a week very carefully. They wore clean clothes every day. Uh, the only thing that was different about their lives other than that was the food that they ate. Six months later, seven of the 11 prisoners break out with the characteristic pellagra rash. Goldberger tells the pardoned men which foods they should eat to cure their pellagra and then waits for public acknowledgement of his breakthrough. But acceptance doesn't come. Some Southerners even accuse him of perpetrating a hoax. When he links pellagra to jobs that don't pay enough for people to eat well, Southerners hear only his social criticism, not his medical reasoning. 
Goldberger, the scientist, is stunned by what he sees as total irrationality. Goldberger returns to the lab and dedicates the rest of his life to finding the specific cause of a disease he already knows how to prevent and cure. Eight years after Goldberger's death, scientists finally discover that niacin, a B-complex vitamin, can prevent the disease. It's soon added to common foods. Today, there are no more cases of pellagra in the United States. And hardly anyone knows this terrible disease ever existed.